This is probably not my most flattering angle, but you are back or you're new here and I'm so excited that you decided to watch this video. So I was just recently invited to a dinner party today actually and I did not know what to bring. I don't want to attend a dinner party or any party with nothing in hand because that is sort of embarrassing and I just don't want to be that type of guy who just freeloads off of everything. But anyways, I didn't know what to bring, and if you know me, I'm the type of person who brings something super extra, super fabulous, super fantastic, almost to the point where there was no need for me to do it. And whenever I attend these dinner parties to the place where I'm attending, I'm the type of person who brings these super amazing desserts that nobody asked for, that like nobody needed, but they just hit the spot, right? So like I said before, I did not know what to bring, but that was until I found myself a box of mangoes. A box of these delicious, juicy, super ripe champagne mangoes, right? My favorite mangoes. But anyways, I think I figured out what I'm going to bring. The people who I'll be serving, they absolutely enjoy mangoes and are absolutely obsessed with mangoes. So I think I'm going to bring mango sticky rice. But if you have paid attention, like I mentioned before, how I'm super extra, I always do these super phenomenal things for no reason. I'm gonna make mango sticky rice super extra by adding uh, more pops of colors, by adding a new flavor that will complement the mango and coconut, and I'll also improve the texture a little bit. Not that the texture is not already heavenly, but like still, I'm gonna make this dessert super extra for no reason. All right, before I wanna get started, um, I need to tell you guys this, that I'm using a completely new setup, different camera, different speaker, different microphone, and everything. So this is why this might this video might be a little bit scuffed, but I need to go to the drawing board because I need to make the dessert quick. Okay, I'm back, and I don't know why I said drawing board when my drawing board was literally just a piece of drawing paper, right? That I stole from my printer. And so anyways, here, if you guys can see, I have a almond chantilly creme and in the middle I have a sliced mango rose and I also have a mint leaf on the side as well and this white palette thing is actually coconut mango sticky rice or coconut sweet sticky rice and these colored syrups are the coconut are dyed colored syrups which should add an amazing pop of color as well to the dessert and notice these little brown bits they are actually almond biscotti that I made before that I'm going to crush up and then sprinkle over the top to make the dessert have a little bit of these precious crunchy textures, right? And if, I don't know if you guys can see here, but these little cubes, they're actually almond jelly and they were leftover almond jelly packets I have and my mom really wanted to eat them. So I think they'll go extremely well with this dessert. I don't know if this is way too extra or if this is going to be way too time consuming because I don't want to be late for the dinner party, but I need to start cooking, like right now. So I'll bring you guys to the kitchen now. <laughs> So here's what you need for a simple mango sticky rice recipe. You need three mangoes. I like to add a half cup of sugar, but you can definitely add more if you want it sweeter. Here in this pitcher is two and a half cups of water. I also have right here in this bowl about two cups of glutinous rice and it's soaked already. But this time I'm not going to use a steamer. I prefer to use a rice cooker because getting my steamer is a lot of work. All right, so here's some extra stuff that I do have. So I have some biscotti left over that I'm going to plan to crush up to create a crunchy topping. And I also have two cups of almond milk. My directions for this almond flavored gelatin dessert says that it uses two cups of whole milk, but I'm lactose intolerant and I don't want to break my toilet. So I'm just going to use almond milk and I believe that it creates a better almond flavor as well. I also have some heavy whipping cream and I also have some mint leaves as well. All right, let's get cooking. All right, so I'm going to start with the almond jelly first because it says I need at least two and a half hours to cook. And I believe that would be the best use of my time. So while I wait for the almond jello to set, I can make the other components of this dessert. 
So I'm just gonna follow the instructions that are on this almond flavored gelatin dessert. I usually like this golden coin one because it's the one that I grew up with, but I'm sure there's other ones in a market where each ingredient list differs on how to make this dessert. But go ahead and follow the instructions for the one that you have. Mine just needs four cups of water and two cups of milk, but I'm gonna sub that with almond milk as I said before. Okay, so I just finished up the jello as you guys saw in the last clip, and now I'm just gonna make the coconut syrup, which should be relatively easy and quick as well. So I'm gonna add in my can of coconut milk, full fat, into the pot, and I'm gonna grab half cup of sugar or more if you like it sweeter. Now this is a pretty important part. I like to pair my coconut with a little bit of salt because I think that goes really well with the flavor and makes the flavor pop out more. Okay, add a pinch of salt in and mix. Okay, so I took it off the stove after it started boiling, getting super bubbly, but it doesn't look really thick right now. It seems rather thin, but after it starts cooling and cools down completely, it'll get pretty thick. And I believe that the thicker the texture may not necessarily be the best texture it is for a coconut syrup for this dish, but that's just my opinion. Some people like the coconut syrup thicker while others don't, and it's totally up to you, but I just like mine thinner. Okay, well, this is extremely optional, but I have my uncooked rice, sticky rice here, and I'm just going to add a few droplets of coconut incense into it. I know that a lot of people, or especially Asian people, they disagree with coconut flavoring or like those artificial stuff, but I really believe that it ties the whole dish together and it adds an extra layer of depth of coconut milk inside the rice. And now I'm going to put it in the rice cooker and then let it cook until it's done. You can technically make the rice whenever, but I like to make the rice after I'm done with the coconut syrup. So my coconut syrup has time to cool, and when it's done cooling, my rice is usually done by then. The whole point is that it doesn't really matter when you make your rice, as long as you have your rice done when you are ready to plate the whole dish. Honestly, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm the one who wrote this recipe, who knows, who has like directions, because I wrote them out and everything, but I don't know whether this will turn out great or not. I feel like I'm just adding in random things that could work, but could not work at the same time. But I don't know, let's just hope for the best because there's nothing else to do. And I already went so far already. And I don't want to like throw everything in the trash because that's wasteful and I'm not wasteful at all. I hope, I don't know. Maybe I am wasteful. Okay, not me having like a midlife crisis in the middle of a video, but I'm just waiting for my rice to finish, and then I can move on to the next segment. And I'm starting to realize that there are a lot of optional things that you could add into it, and like, there's like, I'm just adding way too much. Maybe I'm doing way too much, but I feel like that's my brand, you know? Anyways, I can. My can personally has a lot of coconut fat left, because I didn't shake it up well enough, and I don't want to waste it as well, and I don't want to scoop it into my coconut syrup, because that because that just seems like way too much work. So I'm just gonna scoop it into my rice, my sticky rice, and then mix it all up. And then we'll be A-OK, -okay, or hopefully I will be A-OK. -okay. I don't know, okay. I just continue on to the video. Okay, all right, my rice is done. And I feel like in an Asian household, there's nothing better than opening up like a fresh rice cooker full of rice here. Let me show you guys. This is gonna be amazing, hold on. Like, whoa, look at that. Isn't that so cool? 
Okay, now that my rice is done, I'm gonna add a fourth cup of the coconut syrup into my can with the remaining coconut milk or coconut fat in it, which does have milk in it. And now I'm just gonna pour it into the sticky rice. And it looks like it's too much because it's like a fourth cup of the coconut syrup, but as long as you mix it up, it will turn out pee nicely. Oh, hold on. Oh, look at that. Now you want to mix it up really well because you don't want a bite to have a high concentration of coconut flavoring and then the next bite of rice have no flavoring at all. Okay, so I forgot to mention that the rice will harden up if you let it like cool down for a little while. It looks a little bit really moist and oh, I hate that word, really warm and sort of really extremely gooey, but it's fine because I've done it before and it works and it always turns out perfectly. So now I'm just going to make the whipped cream, which I put the whip heavy whipping cream in the refrigerator. All right. Now I forgot to add this, but you need to add some almond extract to make it into an almond chantilly creme. I'm going to add four or five drops and it's extremely powerful. So don't let that like ruin your whole chantilly cream. Although some people like it a lot more flavorful. So here I am going to add it in. Okay, and this might be a mistake, but I'm just gonna whip it by hand. Last time I did it, my hand broke the next day. Crazy. Okay, so my whipped cream is done whipping. Look at that. Now I'm gonna put it into the refrigerator so that it doesn't deflate. All right, so now I have my four containers. Now I'm gonna pour my coconut syrup into each of them and then add a different color so that I can make a pop of color onto my dessert. Maybe this is a bad idea. I don't know. I feel like this is pretty fun. Although I sort of messed up like five. I don't know why Asian people think that like gel food coloring and artificial flavoring is taboo. But personally, I don't really mind it. I think it's really fun and exciting. So I don't care at all, you know? Okay, so here are my colors and they're so vibrant. And so I think this is a great idea. I don't know, whatever. It's for enjoyment only. I don't know whether people eat it or not, but I think it's just a fun summertime thing to do. Okay, so this is the last step. I have a sliced mango in half. Here, let me show everyone. Oh, I almost cut myself. This. And I'm gonna slice a mango rose, which you probably don't know how to do it, but you really wanna grab a sharp knife and tilt the knife like that and use this pointy bit to cut because if you cut it straight on, it might stick on your knife and it'll ruin your whole rose. Now you really want to slice it really thinly as well. The thinner your slices are, the better it will be to make a rose as it's more flexible. Now you want to fan it out like that using your hands and make it thinner into like a sh straight line. Okay. And then now you want to curl it up. Uh oh, oh no. And the tighter you curl it, the better it'll look. So if it's really loose, it won't look great, but... Here, I'm almost done with mine, and then I can show everyone. 
Okay, and you can tighten the curl if you want, but I find that after I'm done spiraling it, it looks pretty good. And if I tight, try to tighten it even more, it looks even worse and worse. So, all right, so here's my mango rose. And I have some extra bits that sort of flew out, but that's completely fine, as long as it looks pretty good like this. And it doesn't have to look perfect or amazing because you're gonna cover it up anyways. That's just, it's just slicing it into little slices so that's easier to eat. Okay, so I already somewhat assembled it, and I realized that it was stupid of me to try so hard to make a rose out of a mango. So completely disregard what I said before, but I ended up putting the whipped cream on the side. And now it's just time to add in the syrups and then the almond biscotti that I crushed before. Okay, so I finished it. Hold on, let me... Okay, well, comparing my dessert to my original drawing, Let's see if you guys can see that. It looks really childish. Like, my drawing seems pretty cool, but it looks really childish. But now that it's come alive, it's really, like, cool. I'm very impressed with it. Like, from the top view that I drew, it looks completely different. Here, let me show you guys. <laughs> So the top view looks completely different from my picture here, but I'm glad it does because it doesn't make sense that I wasted or I utilized a lot of my time making this perfect like mango rose only to be covered with whipped cream. But time to eat. All right, first bite. Let's try and grab everything if that's even possible. Almond biscotti, check. Almond jello, mango. Mmm. It's very good. The almond crema or almond whipped cream really completes the dish. The jello makes it amazing as well. Wow, maybe I'm gonna eat this all. And I don't wanna eat in like video cause that'll make me look like a pig. Not that I'm not a pig, but it looks, it's amazing. Mm. <laughs> I never knew I'd feel so safe in your eyes. 